Hi there. My name is Per Schofors, but I'm also known as The Price Whisperer. I'm the author of a book that also called The Price Whisperer, oddly enough, but it has a subtitle. It, that subtitle is A Holistic Approach to Pricing Power, and it's everything you need to know about pricing right. I'm the founder of my company that's called uh, Showforce and, um, and Partners. In this episode, we're talking about the importance of price, how price can drive um, superior business result for any company and how you as a as a company executive small or large company need to look at pricing from that holistic point of view so you can make sure that you price right you price often high if you have differentiators and that you take a step back and understand how these differentiators uh, may affect your your price and your profitability. So your company will go to the next level. I hope you enjoyed the show and thank you so much. Hello, fabulous person, Beata Shalet here, The Growth Architect. Welcome back to The Business Growth Architect Show, where we bring you cutting edge business strategies from some of the world's most successful entrepreneurs, business transformation experts and visionaries who want to help you to scale your impact. Look for one tangible strategy that you can take back and implement right away. And now back to our guest. Hello, welcome. Beate Chalet here, The Growth Architect. Today, we are talking about something that you are probably wanting to pull your hair out one by one by one, which is why it's such an important topic. We are talking about pricing. And I have with me the authority on the subject. I have Piers Sofors, and I will try it until I get it right, who is also known as the price whisperer to make it easy for people like me to not butcher his name any further. <laughs> Pierre, I'm so excited for you to be on the show. Thank you so much for being yeah. here. Well, Beata, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And, it, and it's a pleasure to be on the show. I'm looking forward to this conversation. And, and I really hope that the audience is going to find it valuable. Oh, I've, believe me, I'm sure they're already at the edge of their seats because when we talk about pricing, right? And again, we're talking about the strategy of everything. So now we're talking about strategy of pricing. So I'm just going to put this blanket question out there. I'm sure it's a loaded question for you, but pricing and strategy, how those, how do those two go even together? Well, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that requires a very long answer. The the um, first of all, we need to realize that almost all companies have the wrong pricing strategy, and they use a pricing strategy that is they try to find the competitor's price and price the same, and 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 that leads to commoditization eventually. And pricing as a competitor is often the first step into the commoditization death spiral. And you don't want to be in that commoditization death spiral. That's for sure. Yeah. And, so I want to I want to just stop you right here and make sure that everybody really understands what that means. So you're saying that when we go out and we we have our amazing service, our product. Mm -hmm. So our natural tendency would be then to go and says, "What does the market bear?" Right. A question mm -hmm. I've heard a thousand times. Yep. Or let's do the SWOT analysis of what other people are doing. And you mm -hmm. saying that that is a big mistake. That is a big mistake because what happened when you're a commodity, when your customers are perceiving you as a commodity, is that the lowest price are going to win. And often what happened here is that companies start by pricing as a like a competitor, if a competitor have pricing online, right? But that's just the first step because the next thing that happened is that, okay, then you mimic the features and functions and you mimic the, the marketing messages and suddenly you are a true commodity. And, and then the lowest price win means lower margins, means fewer resources for product development, for fewer resources for marketing, and means that even degraded products and so forth, and even lower prices. And, and eventually, once you, very few companies can recover from, from that commodity death spiral because it's very, very, very hard. And you either end up on life support or, or dead, right? So, okay. the, yeah. So, so now we talked about what we shouldn't do. So do not go to your competitors. Do not show, do not check what they're doing. So how do I set a good price for myself? How do I know what I'm worth? Is there um, 
is there a calculation formula of some sort or how do you how do i get to cut, to arrive at my price well it 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 always should be based on what 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 your customers are willing to pay and customers are willing to pay more money for differentiation right and differentiation must be meaningful for the customers right i mean we can take a very simple example from maybe the, the car market right people are willing to pay more money for a bmw than for a toyota because for a portion of the market bmw have differentiators that make sense to that portion right and and the same with you know we we all have our iPhones right and and people are willing to pay more for an iPhone than for for an Android phone for because it it is different in certain ways that customers of Apple are willing to pay more more money for basically and and that goes for everything so how do i get somebody who you know really wants to make more money and and go out there and says i'm worth it but what if I don't really feel like it? Is there, yeah, I'm, am, am I going to just put my shingle out and am I going to just say this is worth more? Is there any, when you work with your clients, is there mm-hmm. a mindset hurdle that you have to overcome with them? There's often a, a mindset hurdle. Our customers are typically smallish to mid market companies, meaning maybe five to 150 million in, in revenues. And, and I speak always to the CEO. And and I hear this again and again that uh, he or she is saying that if we just increase our price a single percent, we're going to lose all our business. But that's of course not true, you know. <laughs> and and so there's a tremendous fear of of increasing prices because most companies don't know the relationship with, with between how price and the perception of value are related, and and in fact. Price itself is the strongest marketing message of value. And there is something in, in, in my industry, in the pricing industry, that's called expectation bias. And what that means is two things. It means that if one of your customers are being presented with a price of a product or a service that they perceive is too low, they won't buy it. Because it beca- that low price becomes a message of inferior quality or benefit. And, and I mean, we've all been there, you know. We kind of hold something in our hand, either physically or not. And and we, 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 we think to ourselves, I kind of want to buy this, but at this price, can't be any good, so I'll pass. Right? <laughs> I mean, you, you know, it is absolutely correct. I think that you have a very valid point. There is a reason when I go to a place like Nordstrom's or Bloomingdale or Neiman Marcus or Chanel or Rodeo Drive, mm-hmm. I expect a certain experience. I expect a certain craftsmanship, and I expect mm-hmm. a certain a certain quality of what I'm buying. Mm-hmm. But then when I go to a Ross or a TJ Maxx, I don't necessarily do because you know, I mean, if I buy a T-shirt for three ninety nine then my expectation is if I wear it four times, I mean, I basically come out ahead. So yep. what would you tell to our listeners that are really worried about pricing themselves out of the market where they say, yeah, I would love, pair, I would love to charge more. Mm-hmm. But every time I do that, my clients tell me that it is too much. What are we going to tell them? Well, if that is the answer you're getting, or your your the audience are getting, it means that they have become a commodity, right? And 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 the first thing they have to do is find ways of differentiate yourself in in some way that makes sense that adds value to the customers, and it has to add value. I mean, it could be. Even even if you're selling what, what is a a commodity product or a commodity service, maybe you can have quicker delivery than 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 a a, um, um, a competitor. Maybe you can bundle that product or service in such a way. 
Maybe you can, maybe you can unbundle it in a certain way. So maybe, maybe you can have different warranties. Maybe it's really taking a step back and saying, how can I in my company add a little bit more value to my company, uh, to my customers in such a way that they see me as different than my direct competition. And because of that, I can charge higher prices. I absolutely love that. I think that what I'm hearing from you, Pear, is that really the idea is that you have to take pricing as seriously as actually creating the product or the service. Oh, absolutely. So 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 we 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 go, right? So I have a, you know, my system, my my signature growth system. Mm-hmm. And I, I think I'm the only one who does it as well as I do. So but I've never thought about from a pricing perspective on how serious I have to be because I rather, you know, want to go in and I want to work on the product and the service and I want to redo the strategic blueprint and I want to, you know, do it in different ways. But what I'm hearing from you is I better be stopping all of that, taking a step back, looking at it and saying, what's it worth? Yeah. So are I mean- there any like suggestions on how I can do well that. well again it 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 all going to depends on the the exact business but think about Starbucks right what used to be a pretty awful so-called coffee in a styrofoam cup with some powdered whitener whitener that was 50 cents right is now five that. bucks Mm-hmm. It's a better product. Oh, if you it's only diff- pay five dollars, you get in a steal. Mine's like seven fifty. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I rarely go to Starbucks. I I have Starbucks coffee in my coffee in my cu- cup here, but I rarely go to Starbucks uh, for for coffee. Anyway, but you see, they 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 differentiated themselves, right? And and they d- differentiated themselves in ways that made the whole experience very different. Right. And because of that, they can charge much higher prices. Right. Now, now the, the the product is better. And do you know, by the way, that Starbucks is the largest buyer of milk in the US? I did not know that. Because that I mean, if from my perspective, who always just drink black coffee, what you get at Starbucks is mostly coffee flavored milk, right? That's so interesting. So so anyway, so so let's go back to now I'm looking at my product, my mm-hmm. service. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to make my positioning statement. Mm-hmm. I am saying I am going to be a low, middle or high provider, right? So there's mm-hmm. different different criteria. Mm-hmm. Then I look at my competitors, but I am going to do this only because I want to know what they're doing so I can differentiate myself mm-hmm. from them. Is mm-hmm. that what I'm hearing? Yes. I mean, I'll tell you this. This is an example of, of differentiation for uh, in a small company. About a week ago, I have a I had a blockage in my in my kitchen sink, right? Happens now and then, nothing special with that. And and I called up this plumber company we've been using for 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 years and years. And what do I get? Well, I get a text back saying, this is the guy who's going to show up, you know? And it's a picture of him in front of the truck that he's using. And it's his name. And here's his his phone number and all, all of that good stuff, right? And, and then I get a, a text eventually saying that I'm there in 10 minutes, right? So from me as a customer, this is a much better experience than I call some I call some plumber somewhere, you know, and and they you know they say, well, we're going to be there Tuesday between nine and five, you know, <laughs> and 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 it doesn't cost the company anything, right? But it it, it makes the experience so much better. And this this is something that works for for similar for 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 everything you know, but going back to the right price, the right way of pricing is always understand how much extra you can charge for this, 
right? And there is, if you if you're looking at <clears throat> startup companies or very small companies that s- sort of can't afford our services, the way you can do this is you can you can go out and and find twenty five potential buyers, twenty five potential customers, and and what you what you then do and these. These are not your current customers. They're not the current prospects, and they're certainly not friends and family, right? And and then you ask them two questions, and phraseology here is very important. You ask them, uh, you describe your product or your service, and then you ask them, so now you know what I'm selling. What is a price that is just barely too low so you wouldn't buy it because you get an expectation of, Poor quality, or that we will under deliver, mm-hmm. or that the the quality of our service is not going to be good enough. What is the price that is just barely too low, right? And then you say, and now let's talk about the flip side. Now you know what we do, you know our product, you know our service. What is the price that is just barely too high? So it doesn't matter how good it is, it doesn't matter if we over deliver. It is still too much money for you, right? Then you take the average of those two points, and and you have a range of where the prices should be, not below this and not higher than that. I right? think it's genius. I think it's absolutely genius because then, then you'll you'll get a an idea. You know, there was a really interesting experience that I had. I was in a sales uh, sales seminar. And then the gentleman said to me, so, you know, how much do you charge for for this one service? And I said, between 65 and 7,500. And then mm-hmm. he says, and what's the result that your customer gets? I said, well, you know, it's not untypical that they'll go out and close a 50000 or or $100,000 deal because yep. they finally understand how to talk about it. And then he looks at me and says, how do you feel about your pricing? <laughs> <laughs> And I said, well, now that you mention it, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> because if 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 what I you know do if that is true, that somebody does take what we do and then turns around and closes, you know, five and six figure deals, then is the price the five, you know, the the the, the five figures is what I charge really appropriate mm-hmm. to what the solution is that they're creating. And that really made me think about you, Pear, because I was like, what would Pear say about that? What does Pear say about that? Well, what I do say about it is, is that in a way I'm in the same boat, right? <laughs> and as 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 many as many service providers that sell something that people won't people don't buy every day, you know? You kind of know what a what a uh, you know, you know what a the, the range of what a a business consultant should be. You know what the range of a accountant should be. You know what the range of a lawyer should be, right? Because you've used them in the past. Uh, in my case, our clients have never used a price consultant before, so they don't know. They don't know what it should cost, right? And and just like like in your case, I mean, I have endorsement from folks who are saying that, well, you helped us grow from a hundred million to way over a billion, right? And so, I mean, so so it's massive amount of monies, you know. But first of all, what you do, it's 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 easy to find out through through our process what people are really willing to pay. The other thing I would do in in your case, I would take, I would increase the price substantially, and I will put a guarantee on it. You know, if it doesn't work, you'll, you'll give half the money back or whatever. You know. Sort of, you double your price or treble your price, and if it doesn't work, you give half the money back. And in the odd occasion where where it doesn't work, you know, you still make more money. Yeah, I think that that what what you're saying is a really um, interesting problem. I think a lot of service providers are in mm-hmm. where we know that what we do is like, what do you put? What's the price of a marriage that's not failing? What's the mm. price of avoiding a divorce that could cost you millions of dollars? Wow. What's the price of 
somebody overcoming, you know, addiction and living a happy life? What's the price of an HR consultant going and building a team and avoiding the turnover? So I think there's really always a fine line between experience. I think you have to have a little bit of a badass attitude about it Mm -hmm. where you, where you say, I I cannot do this for $60. You know, there's a, a case where I was working or considering working with the small business administration, uh, the SBDC. And Mm -hmm. then I found out that what they're paying their consultants and trainers is $60 an hour. I can't work for $60 an hour. I mean, you know, not, not, not at that level. And so I had to say no to that because, you know, or not, not even go there any further because it just isn't, it just isn't feasible for the type of clients that I'm going after. Yeah, so exactly. while we're on the subject, I want to talk to you about something I know is a pet peeve of yours, discounts. <laughs> discounts, yeah. Well, discounts is, is there's something that we have to realize. And, and if you look at any company, first of all, profitability is what fuels every company, right? Not everybody realized that. And certainly not everybody within the company realized that. Maybe some of the executives think about it all the time, but many others in an organization may not. So profit fuels every company, right? And if you look at the average company, profit well, in any company, profit only comes from three variables. It is the cost of running the operation. It is the, the sales volume or whatever you're selling. And it's the price or whatever you're selling, right? For the average company, and of course, no no company is sort of average, but for the average company, if you do a thought experiment and you say, if I change one of these three variables, 1%, how will my profit be affected? And if you can increase your sales volume with 1%, profitability goes up with 3.5%, again, for the average company. If you can reduce your cost with 1%, profitability goes up with 5.5%. But if you can increase your price with 1% or decrease your discounting with 1%, profitability goes up 11.3%. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, stay with us. We'll be, we will be right back with more information about one of the things you all struggle with, discounts. We will be right back. Thank you so much for listening to the show. This is Beate, the Growth Architect. I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you so much for your time. Have you ever wondered why your business is not growing as quickly as you would like it to be? Well, you may have a business growth blocker. And if you'd like to find out what that business growth blocker is, go and take our brand new quiz at growthblockerquiz.com. And in only a few minutes, you're not just going to find out what that blocker is, but also what to do about it. Again, go to growthblockerquiz.com. And now back to the show. And we are right back here with a pair talking about a loaded subject, the question of discounting. So pair, now we are always tempted when it comes to a special occasion. I mean, I think we're trained by our environment or communities like that to always look out for the sale and the discount. Is there a magic number with discounts? Should we be doing this? Should we not be doing this? What What is your opinion about that? Well, just before the commercial break here, I, I mentioned how, how pricing and discounting affects profitability. I have invented something that I call the 1% challenge, right? And the 1% challenge is is very simple, right? If you start looking at your pricing and your discounting and you're changing it 1%. My The challenge here is that have you ever managed or have you ever failed to change anything 1%? Of course not. I don't, I, I don't know if, if 1% is, is a number that would even... No, I'm just saying that it, once you start looking at discount, once you start looking at price, Mm-hmm. Um, you're not going to increase your price 1%. You're going to no. increase your price 5%, 10%, right? And suddenly, if you're like the average company, your profitability is doubled, right? Likewise, with discounting, you're not going to allow your salespeople to go out and discount 25% just to get the deal, right? You're going to say, well, you get 10% to discount. That's it. 
that's what you get. <laughs> go and go and sell a ten percent maximum discount, and 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 suddenly, if if you do this, suddenly the company have a tremendous profits, right? Profits that they can obviously invest, reinvest in the company with more product development or more service development, more marketing, more sales resources, even hire the best people, right? That may not have been possible before. So discounting, and, and there are companies out there where the salespeople are not allowed to discount, period. What, what it means is that they need to be trained to develop to deliver a compelling value proposition, right? And they need to be compelled to say that we are better than the next guy because this and that, you know, and we will do this that they don't do. And we are we are simply we can because we don't discount, we can support you better. All different things, you know. But the key, and and then if you don't discount, there, there, there's a, and, and I, I've seen this, you know, I've seen companies who take take away discounting, they lose a lot of salespeople, right? No surprise, eh? Well, I mean, it's, it's also... almost it's almost like then then I would say if that is the case, then that would mean that the salespeople that they have are trained to close with a deal. Oh, yeah, exactly. Of discount, yeah, and 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 then they attract other salespeople who know there is a better way, who are trained to to that there is a better way, and 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 obviously, if you're commission driven in any way, which a lot of salespeople are, they realize that higher profit margins leads to higher commissions. <laughs> you know, it's 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 kind of simple, right? If it's it's kind it, of yeah. simple, yeah, yeah. I know. Okay, so so let's go through this one more time. So I want to make sure that we we really call it out the way it is. So I'm hearing you say, don't be afraid of of pricing. No, and give yourself time to really step back and run the formulas, which I'm sure you're going to tell us where we can find uh, when we work with you in a minute. Use common sense. Make sure you understand your numbers, so you're actually making a profit. Yes. I have seen this so many times the companies are putting random prices out they don't even know how much money they're making. Yep. If 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 they're doing something which is absolutely which is misery. So cost of goods sold and simple things like that. You said make sure that the salespeople or you yourself as your salesperson understand the value you're bringing. Never make it about the price. The price is is what people are willing to pay for the value that you're providing. And discounting in general is something you need to be super, super careful about. Have I summed this up properly? Yeah, and 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 there's I talked about expectation bias, and low prices leads to an expectation of inferior quality. High prices leads to an expectation of quality and benefit. And there's been any number of of, of trials done in academia. Where they found that that five cent aspirin is not very effective in curing your headache, but the fifty cent aspirin is right. <laughs> so, and and so that's the, the the other thing with expectation bias. It that mm -hmm. if you if you sell something that is more expensive, customer satisfaction goes up. Yeah, I right? mean, yeah, that's 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 very good. And then before we uh, talk about you some more. Now, if I am raising my prices and mm -hmm. now people say that's too much, I can't I can't work with you, it's too much. What should I do now? Find more well, first of all, mind? if you if you raise your prices and everybody is saying that can't can't buy from you anymore, you know, that means that uh, you haven't taken that step back. You haven't found that way of differentiate yourself. And 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 again, you 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 are being perceived as a commodity. Now, it's it's a lot easier to to reduce prices than it is to increase prices, right? So you know, if, if you increase prices, and this is happened many many times, you increase prices, nothing happened. 
your customers don't say anything and everything is hunky dory yeah? and or you may have i i got the <laughs> i i spoke to a, a prior customer a couple of weeks ago and and he said yeah we increased your prices as as your recommendation and this was quite substantial this was increasing prices maybe 50 percent thereabouts and 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 he said yeah we lost a few customers but our revenues are up 150 percent all right you know i mean th there is that you know then you yeah. work less and you make more money uh, which yeah. is not really a bad value proposition no. especially for providers right no and and i got from another client um earlier this year in june i think i uh, i got a screenshot from his accounting system or whatever it was and it showed that sales his sales volume was down with five or ten percent or something his profit margin was up with 49 percent that's amazing and, and his message was very short he says less work more money thanks <laughs> <laughs> well i hope that all of our listeners will send you the same message so let's talk about tell us a little bit about the capacity in which you work with your clients where we can find you and i know yeah. you have a freebie that you want our audience to take advantage of yeah we have um well first of all the, the way to find me and my company and my new book and my youtube channel and all of that is to do a google search for the price whisperer it's it's by far the easiest way if you manage to go to to my site there the, 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 the which is the price whisper dot me actually is price whisper dot me there's about five or six guides on how to increase prices how to put um, pricing as the centerpiece of your business a strategy and so forth lots of very practical and useful information there's also a and those are all free it requires registration but they're all free there is also that one percent calculator on on the on the website and finally, there's a masterclass in pricing. These are 19 video episodes with just about everything anybody needs to know about pricing. There is a there's a cost of that, $950. Um, but if you use a discount called Fall 2020, so F A L L 2022, it should be, then you get a 20% discount. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. I think that the the thought of getting a little bit more serious and conscious about your pricing, not just about the product or service, but also about how you're positioning, what goes into it is absolutely critical to our audience. And well, I'll be doing the same. I will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let me know how it goes. I will. All right. Thank you so much for being on the show. And for Thank everybody you. else, make sure you listen to this episode, maybe one more time to really get all the fine nuances about uh, setting your prices. And I'll see you all next time. Thank you so much. And that's it for us today. Thank you for listening and watching the Business Growth Architect Show. I enjoyed having you here. And for accountability, just take one of the strategies that you have heard, one thing that you can implement in your business immediately. Please leave comments. Don't forget to like and share this show. And if you have any questions about business, please put them in the comments. We are here for you. We're here to support you and help you to grow, build and scale your own business. For more advice, please check out our website in the show notes below. Thank you again. This is Biaf Shillette, the Growth Architect, and goodbye.